Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, as you can see from the title, this is a comparison video. I'm going to be comparing two Android based uh, handheld gaming systems to see what is the best. Uh, obviously it's just my opinion, so you can obviously feel free to differ to see uh, after I come to whatever decision I come to. Now the reason for making this video is <clears throat> The, the one you can see in front of me here, this is the NVIDIA Shield. I bought one of these maybe three years ago. And then, and I, I loved it to bits. And then this other one came along called the GPD XT, um, which is this one. This one here, this is the GPD XT. I bought this and I fell in love with it. Then I decided you know what, I can get rid of this thing, so I sold it. Then, exactly a year after buying this, it stopped working. Um, and I was absolutely gutted, I contacted the company, they weren't remotely interested. So I bought myself one of these again. However, just a week ago, my mate was selling one of these, and I decided to buy it. So listen, I thought what I would do is, I would just do a wee, I mean there's a million videos out there on YouTube showing you the GPDXD and also the Nvidia Shield, but I thought I would just do my own kind of take on it. Compare the sizes, look at the sort of hardware, how it feels, um, and then what I'm planning to do is to, the great thing about both of these handhelds, if I should put them like that, that's, that's probably better, there we go, that's much better. What I'm going to do is, you can plug both of these handhelds uh, into a TV via mini HDMI. And what I'll do is I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison, letting you see the, both systems running the same game. Um, so anyway, to kick things off, you can move over there for the time being. The NVIDIA Shield. Um, released, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. Doesn't really matter when it was released. Now, it is no longer made. You can only buy these things uh, second-hand. They do sell, I think I paid, I got this one in Gumtree, and I think it was, was it 120 quid, something like that. Um, they go anywhere between about, you know, 120, maybe slightly more. Um, now, the thing about this is NVIDIA, you've all heard of NVIDIA, it's a, a very, very good make. Can you see it on the back? Yeah, probably not, it doesn't matter. So, you know, when you're buying something like this, it's going to be good. I think this thing sold for about three, 300 quid when it was brand new. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, you can see here, it looks very, very similar um, in shape to the Xbox controller. It's very, very, it looks like a kind of spaceship, actually. It does look really nice. Really, really nice. You can see here, it's got the NVIDIA shield along the, the bottom. Um, now there is an NVIDIA Shield which is actually a standalone tablet with a controller. This is called the NVIDIA Shield Portable because it's portable. So yeah, on the back, on the front, I believe this is actually a coolant. This has actually got a built-in fan to keep the thing uh, cool. Don't ask me the chipset, I have got no idea. If you want, if you want to know uh, any technical stuff, you need to go elsewhere because you're not going to hear it from me. It's kind of really sort of tough rubber, quite kind of sticky feeling, which is good because it gives you a good grip. Um, on the back, if you can see that, you have got just up there, that is a mini SD card. Now I think you can put 128 gig, in fact I know you can because I've got a 128 gig um, SD card which works on this and also in the GPD. This thing, I don't know what the, the built-in memory is. It's not very much. I think it might be 16 gig, if that. But you know what? You only need enough space to load emulators because you're buying all the ROMs onto the card. So yeah, it's got the mini HD, uh, sorry, mini uh, SD card slot there. This is the mini, I'll try to move it up a wee bit. This is a mini HDMI. This is a mini USB charger thing. Both of these things use the same charger. You've also got your uh, headphone out. On the back, you can see there, you've got the two triggers, quite springy. And beside them, you've got the two, so it's like right one and two, left one and two. Flipping over the front. Now this thing here, this 
doesn't serve any purpose other than uh, it's actually got a, a kind of magnet and it just locks into place. You can actually buy, or at least you could buy different versions. So you could have a, I don't know, a blue one if you want, if that takes your fancy. But it doesn't do anything other than look nice. And you push it up like so. Oh, I've actually got the thing switched on. Let's see, you can go back to that. Now, controller wise, I've got to say, this is the bomb. It is really nice. Um, people, a lot of people say that the D pad isn't great. I find it fine. I mean, it's slightly spongy feeling. A wee bit spongy feeling. But I find it's absolutely fine. You've got the left and right trigger. Now, they feel really good. They actually feel really like the Xbox 360, any of the modern consoles. They also go... So you've got... Whoops. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm opening up Google. Yeah, so you can click. So you've got that, and then you obviously click in to get another button. You've got your uh, standard Nintendo style buttons, A, B, X, and Y, and you've got stereo sound. Now, the, the sound in this is actually pretty good. Quite loud. Um... So yeah, that is that is basically the controls. You've got your volume, you've got your start button, whatever. You've got your back button, and you've got your home button. Now, one big thing about this, it's not just a system you use for playing Android games. If you've got an NVIDIA card, which I have, you can stream, you can actually stream any games that you've got in Steam, you can stream them across to this thing. Now, I have tried it. It's not bad. Um, I found there was a wee bit of lag sometimes, but personally, I'm not remotely interested in playing PC games in this, but I've got to say, it does work, um, and it works pretty well. There was also a service, I don't know whether it still exists, because technically this thing is no longer made. There was a service, I think you paid, I don't know, whatever it was, it might have only been released in America, you paid X amount of money per month, maybe like a five pounds per month, and you could basically go to a, like a store and just stream games from the cloud, the internet, whatever. Um, you weren't downloading them, you were literally just playing them via the cloud, which was quite clever. Um, but I got this for emulation. Now, the screen, it's obviously a touch screen. Let's see, how do we get there? I'll just turn the bright, oops, a daisy. I'll turn the brightness up a wee bit. Come on! Um, how do we get that? There we go. That's, that's better. What I'll do, to let you see the screen, I'm going to turn the internet on. Uh, Wi-Fi. Should be getting switched on. There we go. Mame. And then I'll do home. Now I think I have YouTube uh, installed. I believe I do. There we go. And what we shall do, let's see if there's any iconic YouTuber. Ah, there's a chap called Me Meister. My videos. Right, let's look at the Friday Waffle that I put out yesterday. So there you go, there's a glorious looking fine fellow if ever I saw. Um, right, how do we sound? Oops, a daisy. Smart tab, I'm gonna call them smart tablets. Um they're really they're they're wonderful things, but there's a double edged sword to them. So you can I'm hear the uh, you know, if I'm on a train it does go nice and loud. Weekend, uh, and what I like about this is you can basically put, tilt uh, it at any angle you want. And uh, yeah, you know, you go on the train yeah, you and every can. single person you can bugger off. Right, let's let's look for a music video. Let's uh, let's have a wee look. In fact, you know what? I better not do a music video. Let's look for a gameplay video. Because if I use a music video, then I'll get hit for copyright. Uh, oh, oh, there's games that you've not actually seen yet. Right, there's my arcade perfect my arse. But it is really, really good quality. I'm trying to lift it. Get to 
see that certain right hand turning. You always see me crash. I don't know if it was there some special way you had to go around the corner. I'm really not too sure. Let me just you can see this game is very much in the eyes of individuals. I mean, it's not a game that you really hear people talk about. Really. It's been a classic <laughs> racing game. You know, there the same vein as like outrun whatever. People will never really talk about Cisco game. So the screen is really nice. It's, 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 yeah, it's a product but you can time, shut up. I think it's quite impressive. Let's zoom back out again. Right, away you go, Alan. Yeah, so the screen of this has got a plastic kind of coating, but it's actually really. It is very, very responsive. So there's all my emulators there. So yeah, that is that is basically it. That is the NVIDIA Shield Portable. So it's got stereo speakers, all the buttons. It's got two left and right. Well, right, one, two, three, and left, one, two, three as well. So that is the NVIDIA Shield Portable. Now you can move out the way. We'll just close them up for the time being. You can go over there. And we shall bring in the GPD XD. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, it is it is absolutely modelled on the 3DS XL. Um, if you put them side by side, I think they're almost identical in size. Now, the difference between this and the, G, the, the 3DS is this only has one button. One button? One screen. Listen to me talking absolutely bollocks. Um, yeah, it's got a really nice, uh, the screen in this looks really nice. The only thing about this is it is absolutely, uh, it's like a, a honeypot to wasps um, for sticky fingers, you know, marks. I don't, you can probably, yeah, you can see the, the fingerprints, but you know what? Who cares? <laughs> that's what a clock, that's what spit in a finger's for, just give the screen a wipe. Now this one, it's uh, it's got the two sticks left and right they're a lot um, looser shall we say than the Nvidia Shield but they've got a really really nice sticky kind of rubber so your finger is not going to slip off of that at all it feels really comfortable when you're using it um, again you've got the four Nintendo style buttons let's move in a wee bit like so you can see it better yeah you've got the four the four buttons almost identical to the the, the shield. You've got your volume up and down. You've got this button here that brings up it's like all the apps that you've got open and you can close them. This button here, one thing I do like about this, in fact, the NVIDIA Shield's got the same. If you're playing a game um, that only uses touch screen controls, what you can actually do is if you press that button, it allows you to drag buttons over the on screen controls and then you can then use proper um, hard, you know, proper buttons, which is really, really, really nice. So the NVIDIA Shield's got that function as well. You've got your start, select, back, and home button. Um, it looks like something should be down here, but that's that's just the way it is. You know, um, obviously the 3DS would have a screen round about here. I think we'll zoom back out again, like so. Uh, on the, the front, there's not an awful lot. In fact, there's nothing. You've got this little uh, thing for putting. A, but you've got a piece of string so you can wrap it around your wrist. I don't know anybody that ever actually uses these. On the back, um, you've got R1 and R2. Quite clicky. You can hear that. Yep, quite responsive. Same on that side. You've got your SD card. Again, this one I've got, this uh, this is built in 16 gig of memory. Um, I don't think you can get the 16 gig one anymore. You can get the 64 and the 32, but to be honest with you, I wouldn't bother too much about going for the, the one with the most space, unless you're getting it for the same price, which you won't, because again, like the Nvidia Shield, this takes a micro USB. I'm using a 128 gig on it. You could probably go even higher, you know, if you wanted to play lots of Mega Drive, not Mega Drive games, lots of Dreamcast games, CD images, then you'd probably need the bigger cards. But yeah, you've got your little mini USB uh, for charging. You've got your mini HDMI and you've got your earphone out. And that is that is it. The one thing I completely 
forgot to tell you about the shield is the way I mean this thing this feels just like a 3DS if you've ever held a 3DS before then you know exactly what you're getting it is really nice it sits really well in the hands I've not got the biggest hands in the world but you know my fingers can reach the back absolutely fine your fingers are ideally placed for that plus the buttons as well the gamepad again it's quite similar to the the uh, Nvidia Shield uh, portable it's quite spongy um, I generally use this thing because I like it's a really nice analog can you stick but again it works you know it doesn't I don't have any issues with it again this one has got speakers I think it's stereo speakers I'm not actually too sure I'll maybe I'll try in a second um, and instead of obviously the Nvidia Shield you could click these buttons this doesn't have the clickiness but what you've got is an L3 button here so instead of pressing that down you've got the buttons here and the same you've got the right one the right R3 you know so you don't press it down um, now one thing that this does not have which seems to upset quite a few people it doesn't have Bluetooth so you can't plug in an external controller though I have seen people I think using the uh, using the mini USB I've seen people buying an adapter so you can connect a controller to it I've never tried it I don't really see the point of it to be honest with you now when you've got this plugged into the TV via that you can you've got it plugged into the TV and you just use the controls to control all the what's on the TV and it's the same with the Nvidia Shield so yeah this is nice and light really really comfortable to use the screen is a beautiful screen I said it's a haven for fingerprints whoops unlock that um, but you know who cares again it's running Android so you know how how that works um, the Nvidia Shield let me just park him over there for a second the Nvidia Shield is heavy I don't know what the weight is I would reckon let me just feel that feel that I would almost go so far as to say that that feels about twice the weight of that thing um, but again, this feels really, really comfortable. I think I probably prefer that feels probably slightly comfier to use where the, the you know, you find, when you're holding something like that, like this, your thumbs sit about here. They don't really sit. That feels slightly uncomfortable, whereas that is the more natural way to hold something. But saying that, I've used this, you know, this is still super comfy to use, but I think I probably for, uh, prefer the, the layout of the, the analog sticks. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the hardware. Anything else I forgot to tell you? I don't think so. This has got Bluetooth. Um, I mean, quality build-wise, this is bomb-proof. I think if you drop that, it would still work. I think if you drop that, it probably wouldn't. Now, like I says, I did own one of these and it gave up the ghost after a year. So I was absolutely gutted. Um, but because I got it for quite a good price, I was quite happy to get it because it's an awesome system. Um, so, yeah, right, what I'm going to do now, in fact, let me see if I can just, uh, I don't have, I don't think I've got YouTube installed in this at the moment. In fact, let me just, let me download YouTube. Right, this will show you the in fact you know what I've got the, I've got it on airplane mode so you can see here how the Wi-Fi works. How good it is Wi-Fi you can switch on. Now one thing I haven't told you about is the uh, the battery in both of these is really 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 good. I've found in the past some of these Android devices is the GXD whatever it is, it's the big one that's been out for years. The battery in that was crap. You know, you maybe got a couple of hours tops. This thing, I don't know. I've not used it a lot, but I, I don't know. I would see you probably getting maybe four or five hours worth. And the same with this. I think possibly the Nvidia Shield has got a slightly better battery. And that's probably why it is so heavy. So, right, let's... We've got the Wi-Fi turned on. Let's just go back. And we shall... Uh, YouTube... I thought YouTube would have been built into this thing. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. It's already on. What do I know? Right, let's... Uh, 
let's bring up my my channel and um, right we'll put on this one again and we shall turn up the volume slightly But you know what I'm going to do? Right, first up is the Commodore 64. Never played any home version of this. <laughs> what do you mean? Right, let's uh, No, we is don't want it. It's YouTube. There you are. Just turn the lights out actually, so you can see it there. Well. I think the screen's um, of the same size, right? Anyway, shut up, shut up. Right, go back to home. Right, that is basically the hardware side of things, guys. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to connect these bad boys up to the TV, and I'll do a side by side shot of some games running, just to kind of give you an idea um, of what, how they how they actually work. Um, I'm not expecting there to be much a difference, if any. Um, so, and then at the end of it, I shall give summarise and give you my thoughts. So, back in a tick. Right, okay, this is Streets of Rage 2, and this is on the NVIDIA Shield. I did try to record it through the TV, but for whatever reason, my phone seems to pick up a lot of glare, so it looked like all the games were black and white, so let's start this. Probably see my ugly face here for a second. <laughs> I'll just zoom in actually so you can see it better. Right, let's go. Now I'm kind of hunched over a tripod to our missus, so uh, if you think I'm rubbish, that's my excuse. Now this plays silky smooth. Absolutely flawless. That's a special move, I think. Shamefully, this is a game I have very, very, I've played very, very little of. I'll just get to the first kind of end of level bit. And then we shall move on to the, the GPD XD. Take that. Right, let's move on to the GPD XD one. Right, okay, this is now the GPDXD version we're looking at. Well, not version, it's the Mega Drive emulator, obviously. Right, how do we start? Uh, press the start button, I'm guessing. The sound is definitely better on the, uh, the Nvidia Shield because it has got, it's, it's got better speakers. But saying that, the sound on the GPDXD is Absolutely fine as well. Is that? Oh, that's kind of, yeah, it looks. It's... Yeah, I have got the brightness turned down a wee bit in the GPD, so that's why it doesn't look quite as bright.
the controls in both both bits of hardware is absolutely perfect. I'm certainly doing a bit better in this version than I did in the other one. So absolutely no uh, no noticeable differences at all with a Mega Drive emulator. So right, let's take a look at something else. Right, this is the Game Boy Advance, and again, this is on the Nvidia Shield. I'm trying to kind of choose a game that I think is kind of going to tax a wee bit. Um, but I think generally, let's go for 150cc, generally the, these emulators are spot on. Right, we'll go for my favourite, Yoshi. The screen in this thing is just so vibrant, it really is. It's an amazing screen. If any game was going to not play properly, it would be this game. I would imagine. I know certainly the Mario Kart and the SNES can be a wee bit dodgy. Whoops, I did, I just pressed the uh, fast forward button there. That's why it suddenly sped up. This is an excellent version, it really is. So you can see there, it plays perfect. Unlike my uh, gameplay skills. And we'll finish the second lap. Right, let's move on to GPD XD. Okay, this is a GPD XD one. I'll turn the brightness up a wee bit. Now I notice I've got the aspect ratio set slightly different on the Nvidia Shield, it stretches to the full screen so that's why it does look a wee bit bigger than the, the GPD one. I can change it if I want but I'm just going to leave it. Right, let's press the start button. Uh, whoops, a daisy. I'll go to that and then we'll go down to for consistency. We shall go press that. Mm. You know what, is this playing slightly more sluggish than the Nvidia Shield? It's really, really hard to tell. It's hard to tell. If I was pushed to make a, a, a decision, I'd probably say it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. It's not quite as fluid as the Nvidia Shield one. I'm going to have a sore neck in the morning, you know that, because I'm stretching over this tripod. But you know what, if there is any any difference, it is tiny. I mean, this is still fantastically playable. Right, let's move on to something else. That is the GPD version of Mario Kart and that is running on the Game Boy Advance emulator. Right, you know what game this is. Again, this is on the Nvidia Shield Portable. So let's 
So that gives you an idea of just how uh, smooth it plays. But I've got to say the sound in this, this little console is super impressive. As much as this game is amazing, I'm not a fan of it. I just find it too difficult. <laughs> Can complete one level of this, I'm doing well. Ah, bugger off. But I picked this game because obviously it's it does tax the, the C64 hardware, so yeah, that's uh, Uridium, and that's on the NVIDIA Shield Portable. Let's try the GPBX. <laughs> right, and this is the GPDXT one. So let's just watch this scrolling. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, the sound is probably a wee bit tinnier, I think, than the. Uh, ah, bollocks. This game is just insanely hard. And the controls work. <laughs> the controls work really well in both of them, you know, either the you can either use the analog stick or the gamepad. I would suggest you use the gamepad because obviously the analog stick is just that, it's analog, which isn't really I am so pants at this game. Anyway, listen, let's move on. That gives an indication that the, the C64 emulation, there is absolutely no difference at all. So let's look at something else. Right, this is Dodon Patchy. Again, this is running on the NVIDIA Shield Portable. Right, how do we start? There we go. And I've got to say that neither of these handhelds is particularly brilliant. Uh, for vertical shoot 'em ups, not because they can't do them, but it's just because the screen is a wee bit on the small side. Um, if you've got, if your eyesight's not the greatest, then it's probably not advisable. But saying that, you can plug it into a TV, and it will play absolutely fine. But the sound in the NVIDIA Shield is awesome. It's quite bassy as well, which is quite surprising for a little handheld. Yes, playing a game, playing a bully hill shooter through a camera lens is not the most advisable way to play it. So you can see there, it's silky smooth. Right, let's try the GPD XD, same game. Right, okay, this is a GPDXD one. Let's get it going. Uh, it seems to play absolutely fine.
Now I know Steve Benway made a video and he was playing this game and he mentioned about the screen slowing down when you hold down the fire button like that but that's how the game plays when you hold down the, the fire button you get this big laser thing but everything slows up that's how it's supposed to play so and there ain't anything wrong with <laughs> this is just an absolutely insane game. Right, okay, that's Dodon Patchy, and this is on the GPD XD. Let's crack on. Up oh, is one of my favourite platform games, it's Rolling Thunder. And again, this is on the NVIDIA Shield Portable. Now this game can sometimes uh, suffer from kind of sort of jerky scrolling, so it's a good, quite a good test. And you can see there, hopefully, the scrolling on the NVIDIA Shield is super smooth. Oh, you get. Plays really well with the controls in this as well. And the sound is really, really nice. So it's got plenty of bass as well, which is what you want. Right, yeah you can see how good the scroll is there, so let's cut to the GPD XD. Right okay, this is the GPD XD Rolling Thunder. Um, how do we start? Arse. The controls are oh, there we go, the controls are working. Right, okay. Now, wait a minute, what is what are the controls? That's fire. Right, that's jump, right. The buttons are all messed up in this version. <laughs> but you can easily change that. Now let me just jump down here and walk back and forwards. There's a slight, I don't know if that's coming across in camera, a very, very slight judder going on. I don't know if you can see it. It's very, very slight. It's certainly not enough to make playing the game not enjoyable. But I didn't notice that in the end video one. You can probably tweak the controls to stop that, but, but you know what, it's so insignificant that it's really no. I'm just being, I mean the whole point of this video is just to do a kind of comparison to try and see if there is any, any difference. This is a great game though. It's not a game you can really rush either. Ah, bugger. <laughs> right, anyway, that is Rolling Thunder. 
and that is running on the GPD XD. Right, okay, this is Cruising USA, and this is running on the N64 emulator. This one gives quite a good idea of how a game's going to run. And we'll just stick with the same cars, I think. Now, one really nice thing about this emulator is it upscales. So the graphics look nicer than they would have on a normal N64. Right, let me try and play it through the phone. It's quite twitchy. <laughs> you can see how smooth it is. right through the landscape there. Now I'm using an analog stick, well again I was going to say I'm using an analog stick which is probably the wrong thing to do. Whoa. Then that would be the right thing to do because the N64 had an analog stick. That says it is very very twitchy. So yeah you can see there it plays supremely. And again, that is on the NVIDIA Shield Portable, so let's try the same game on the GPDXD. Right, same game, and this time on the GPD. Right now, I've not, I've not messed about with any of the options uh, in this emulator. I've just installed it on both of them. It's just basically the default options you'll see there. There's some graphical glitch. Well, not some. There's a lot of graphical glitching going on, which I'm guessing you can probably get rid of if you change some of the options. I don't think, I know it's hard to tell with the, the corruption, I don't think this is playing quite as fast as the NVIDIA, but it's difficult to tell. Now I'm sure I used to play this game on the GPD and it was absolutely fine, so like I say, it could be that I'm, you know, there's just a wee op couple of options you need to tweak to get it working better. So that is uh, that's the N64 emulator, and again, this is on the GPD XD. Right, this is GTI Club. This is running on the PSP emulator, and again, this is on the Nvidia Shield. And I'll just turn that down a wee, a wee tad. Oh. There we go. You can bugger off. Right. No, oh, let's. We don't want to do a quest. We want to just do the arcade game. That'll do it. Move that so it's in the centre. Um, let's just go for France, I think. Now I know the PSP emulator. It, there's an absolute billion, billion options. It's a very noisy game, this. Right, come on. You're way too loud for my liking. Yeah, there's a thousand and thousand uh, options in this game. And again, I've not done tweaked any options. This is me just playing it with default settings. Right, 
Frank's alright. It's not. It's not what I would call 60 frames a second. But again, am I going the right way? How I am? Again, you could probably tweak the settings to get it running better. And I think, well, a lot of these emulators, especially quite taxing emulators like this, it all depends on the game. I've got to say, I don't generally play PSP emulators on these because I'm quite a stickler for it playing well. If a game doesn't play as well as it should or does on original hardware, I genuinely don't, or so I genuinely won't play it. So anyway, that's GTI Club and that's a PSP emulator and this is on the Nvidia Shield Portable. So let's try the same game on the GPD. GTI Club. Right, this is the GPD XT one. Let's start the game. Oh man, oh, it must have been because I've played it before. Right, let's just go for anything. Confirm name, that'll do. Yep. Your name is confirmed, thanks for that. See, I can't even ask me all this. Uh, Laughing about, I just want to get right into the, the meat and bones of the game. Right, let's go for arcade. Stick to the same course. Come on, just start playing. Yes, yeah, a really noisy game. Right, you can already tell the sound is... Yeah. Ugh, I'll need to turn that down a wee bit. And again, I've not done any tweaking at all. So this is just plain default setting. So this, this is the, the first major emulator that we've tried where it's not performing as well as the Nvidia Shield. See that probably the the actual graphics are fine. It's just the sound that seems to be very very choppy. I think it's maybe playing a bit slower actually. Yeah, see, I wouldn't play this. I know some people would be happy to play this. I mean, you can, as I say, you can mess about with options. You can twiggle the, the frame rates. You can have it only displaying every second frame, whatever. But I wouldn't be happy with that. I dare say you would be able to get it so it was working. So anyway, you can see there the Nvidia Shield certainly for this game and this emulator is does play considerably better. So right, let's move on to something else. Right, okay, this is uh, Ridge Racer Revolution, and again this is on the Nvidia Shield, and it's running under the PlayStation emulator. Who would have thought back in 1995, was it, whenever, when we got our uh, PlayStations, that we would be one day playing it on a handheld? No, just 
Mental. Absolutely mental. <laughs> Now you can see this is for, you know, flying along at a fair rate of licks. No slowdown at all. Now, unfortunately, I'll not be able to let you see uh, <coughs> excuse me, the Dreamcast Amiga um, is it the, not the PlayStation 2, is it the Sega Saturn I think it is. I know there are emulators out for, for these machines. But I haven't had time to set them up yet. I don't actually have any space on the SD card to be honest with you for for putting any of these kind of CD based games. Although I do have a few PlayStation ones on it, but you can they're quite small in comparison. So yeah, there you go. That is a, that is a PlayStation emulator. And that is running on the Nvidia Shield. So we'll have a wee look at it. Same game, same emulator on the GBD XD. Right, and the same game on the GPD. Now you might, might have noticed that this one is slightly wider. Again, this is because I've got this one set to uh, take up the full screen. So let's get it going. Let's turn up the sound a wee bit. Absolutely nothing wrong with this version. I absolutely love this game back in the day. Especially the first one. It was the first game that I played at home and I just, it felt like the arcade had come home. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, to me, it was, this was arcade perfect. So yeah, this one plays, I would say, just as well on the GPD as it does on the NVIDIA. Shield portable. Woof. Right, let's take a look at something else. So that is, that's Ridge Racer Revolution, and that is on the PlayStation emulator. Right, this is Star Fox, and this is on the Super Nintendo emulator, and again, this is on the Nvidia Shield Portable. I'm going to try to pick a kind of game that would sort of tax the hardware a wee bit just to see how it actually works. Push start to exit. Right, let's go to the game I think. Seeing this for the first time was like, it was just incredible. It looks pretty dated now, but you know, back in whenever it was, this just looked amazing. Oh, 
I'm not trying to remember to shoot things. <laughs> I never did get very far in this game. Which was a crime. I mean, the polygons for this game are just simply ahead of their time, they really were. We'd never really seen anything like this at all. So, anyway, this is Star Fox, and this is in the SNES emulator. And this is running on the NVIDIA Shield Portable. So let's take a look at the same game on the GPD. Nope, oh, spin round, there we go. And this is it running on the GPD XD. But all these games look glorious on either machine, they really do, on the little screen they just look really really nice, really vibrant colours. Don't think there's any real difference at all in this one. Not that I was expecting any difference. But it just like machines when it comes to SNES emulation. I think it's quite funny how one of the big selling points of the new uh, SNES Mini is there's, uh, what's the game? Sky Fox 2, well, us with emulators have been playing that game for years. <laughs> well, I've not actually played it, I don't think. Yeah, this plays absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. I really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between either system. Yep, yeah, that is Sky Fox, it says, and this is the SNES emulator, and this is the GPD XD. Let's take a look at another couple of games. Right, okay, this is Metal Slug, and this is uh, the Neo Geo emulator, and again, I'm running this on the NVIDIA Shield Portable. So let's start. Absolutely gorgeous game, this, it really is. It's just such a fun game. <laughs> and it looks incredible in the little scheme. So you can see there, it runs absolutely flawlessly.
Right, let's move over to the GPD XD version. Right, this is the GPD XD one. So let's where do we start? Start button. There we go. Start. Again, it looks absolutely glorious in the little screen. And I don't think there's any difference between the performance of this or the other one. Yeah, that's Metal Slug. And that is on the Neo Geo, and that's on the GPDXD. Let's take a look at one last game, guys. Right, this last game, guys, is Street Al sorry, Street Fighter Alpha Two. And again, this is uh, running this on. Oh, this is uh, by the way, this all arcade games that I'd like to see are all running the pink version of Mame. There is a final burn emulator for uh, for this as well, and it's excellent. So anyway, let's. Two coins to start. You know, running games like this on a small handheld are just is insane. Yeah, that runs beautifully. So that is Street Fighter Alpha 2 and that is on the NVIDIA Shield Portable. Let's take a wee look on the GPD. Right, and this is the same game. This time it's on the GPD. So let's start. In fact, I'll just watch the intro for a wee second. Right, we'll just go for Ryu again, I think. Now, as much as I can't play beat em ups, I've got to see the controls on both these consoles is absolutely fine. Possibly. Some kind of uh, expert might say, well, this is a better one for whatever, but you know, for me messing about for the purpose of this video, I find them absolutely just as good as each other. You can see there the speed, there's no slowdown at all. The sound is fine as well. There we go. So anyway, yeah, that is Street Fighter Alpha 2 and that is on the GPD XD. Right, okay guys, there we have it. That's a kind of brief overview of both systems. Now there's obviously far more detailed uh, videos out there in YouTube land if you want to look at, you know, other systems. 
Um, I just wanted to make this video just to kind of let you see both kind of going head to head. Um, both of them are absolutely fantastic consoles. If you had either of them, you would be extremely happy. Um, <clears throat> the Nvidia Shield Portable is, you can probably get it for about the same price second hand. The problem you've got with that is you're not going to get it brand new. Um, they don't make it anymore. I don't know why. there have been talk of bringing out a sequel to it. If they ever brought out a, a sequel, I would be all over it. I really would. But uh, yeah, so you're looking at getting it second hand, um, but you'll probably pay about £120, £150, which is what you're going to pay for the GPD. In fact, if anything, the GPD XD might be slightly more expensive. But uh, both of them do phenomenal jobs at emulating old systems. Like I said, I've not tried, I've not really played the Dreamcast that much. I've not tried the Sega Saturn. Um, the only emulator that we did look at, which you could see ran better on the Nvidia Shield, was the PSP. But uh, that's, you know, there, there's plenty of options to kind of mess about with. But I would say, as far as controls go, controls in both of them are really comfortable. The Nvidia Shield is heavier, so you probably couldn't use it for as, you know, such a, the same amount of time. Um, <clears throat> battery wise, I think they're both pretty much on a, you know, same. You're probably going to get about four or five hours battery life out of it. Um, the GPD XD, as I say, this is my second one. The first one stopped working. It is, it does feel cheaper. Um, that's because it is. I mean, the Nvidia Shield Portable was about three, four hundred pounds when it first came out. It does feel cheaper. If you dropped it, I wouldn't like to uh, bet that it was going to survive a drop. Whereas I think the, the Nvidia Shield Portable probably would. <laughs> um, quality wise, the Nvidia is better. It does feel more solid. You know, it would. It really does feel a, a solid, solid machine. If I was to buy, if I was to only get one of these machines, I would probably go for the Nvidia Shield. Um, it's slightly more powerful, I think. Um, it's just, it's it's bomb proof, it really is. Um, but the GPDXD is a wonderful little machine. It's more portable, you can stick it in your back pocket, whereas the Nvidia Shield, you couldn't really do that. Um, so both machines are absolutely fantastic. But like I said, if I was to make a choice between the two of them, then I would probably go for the Nvidia Shield, just because it does feel, it does feel more expensive, it feels better put together. The GPD doesn't, it still feels amazing, but I think it's, uh, you know, as I said, I can only speak for experience. I did have one and it stopped working, you know, but uh, it's really doing it yourselves at the end of the day, guys. There's really nothing to split them when it comes to what each one can do. You know, if you bought any of them, then you're going to be one happy bunny because the, the difference in power is absolutely negligible. So anyway, guys, listen, I hope you've found this uh, video quite helpful. Like I said, there are more, um, more in-depth reviews of these machines on YouTube. But anyway, guys, as usual, thank you very much for watching.